Many people have asked what accessory is necessary when they start doing 3D printing. A film and dryer might be the one on top of the option list. But do you really need a film and dryer? We are going to find out today. I want to thank FixDry to send me this film and dryer for this video project. There is a 10% discount code on the description below if you like to purchase any film and dryer and film from FixDry website. And I can get some commission to support my video making without any extra cost on your side. Back to our topic today, do you really need a film and dryer? The short answer is yes and no. Let's say Tom is living on Seattle, it rains a lot there, his wife only allowed him to put his noisy 3D printer in the basement. He's doing a lot of PETG film and printing for his workshop tubes. He also sometimes prints on high strain film like nylon carbon fiber, polycarbonate, and PA12 carbon fiber. Then, film and dryer is almost necessary for him. On the other hand, Lisa is living on a town next to a Death Valley, where there's barely any motion in the air. She's only printing some articulate dragon with PLA filament. She will probably never need a film and dryer for her cute little dragons. The need for film and dryer really depends on where you live and what film you are using. More specifically, the moisture level in the surrounding environment of your 3D printer and how you store your filaments. The moisture level could be a bit different between living space and your basement. I normally observe the level of the moisture with this hydrometer. I think that's what most people use. Not super accurate, but it will do the job. The other major factor is what type of filament you are printing the most. Most filament like PLA, PTG, TPU, ABS, ASA, polycarbonate, and carbon fiber blend, engineer grade filament are relatively rare to use for most hobbyists. So let's leave aside those PPE, PEEK, PPP filaments. Some of the filament mentioned above are some more sensitive to moisture. Some have higher water absorb rate. Typically, normal PLA is less sensitive to moisture. So 30 to 50% range of humidity level should be fine for most of the basic PLA. However, I have personally find that silk and matte PLA are generally more sensitive to moisture. Now, how do you find out if your film is too wet? Besides refer to humidity level from the hydrometer, the simplest way to test your PLA filament is bend it to 90 degrees. If your PLA filament snaps very easily at this angle, it is most obvious sign of a wet filament. Wet PLA filament may cause printing issues like bubbles, stringing, under extrusion, and the finished part will be very brittle. Sometimes it might clog your extruder. You may hear some popping noise during printing. This is less on the PLA filament, and it's more occur from the PETG filament. PETG and ABS filament are significantly more sensitive to moisture. Moisture will have big negative impact to the surface finish when you print in PTG and greatly impact the strain of ABS. Some of more exotic filament like polycarbonate, PLA or PTG carbon fiber blend, nylon carbon fiber known as PA6CF or PA12CF, they are even more difficult to deal with. It is generally recommend to print those filaments with a heated chamber and dry before printing. Now, how to store your filament is extremely important. I normally keep my PTG, TPU, and some of the more expensive filament in a sealed bag with a descent. I also have kept my regular PRA in my room for years, and I don't have any issue with it. But some filament like nylon carbon fiber absorb moisture very fast. Exposing it to the humid room air during printing could already cause issues. Even some of the brand new filament might come with the wet conditions. In this case, film and dryer could solve your problem. All the filament require different temperature to dry at different hours. You may find different answers on a different website. But in general, PLA and TPU filament dries around 50 Celsius around 4 hours to 6 hours. PTG filament requires 60 to 65 degrees for 4 hours plus. ABS could dry around 65 to 70 Celsius for 4 hour plus. And exotic filament like polycarbonate, nylon, carbon fiber blend, they require a little bit more temperature, 70 Celsius to 80 Celsius for 8 hour plus. If you dry with 70 Celsius, it may take longer to dry, somewhere from 12 to 24 hour or even more. I have recently bought some exotic filament for a video project. This fixed dry filament dryer can be handy.
This Fixture NT1 is currently on sale on Fixture website for around $90. It is able to hold up to two rolls of filament at the same time, with a maximum 70mm of a filament spool width. Or you can place one huge roll of filament like this one in there. It is equipped with a 110 watt PTC heater. It will self-regulate the heat during operation, so it is technically more energy efficient and safer compared to the traditional heating element. It can reach 70 Celsius maximum temperature. In my test, this is a room temperature. The electricity consumption during heating, it takes this amount of time to reach 50 Celsius. For your reference, the regular 3D printer electricity consumption during initial heating is around 300 watts, and less than 100 watts during printing. NT1 has one built-in fan to bring the hot air distributed more evenly around the filament. Fixture NT1 could set timer from 0 to 48 hours. You are able to adjust minutes too. When you increase the timer above 48 hours, it will turn into always on mode until you manually shut it off. You can change the setting from control panel here. No fancy touch screen or the bell and whistles. Just simple stuff but fairly easy to use. You can increase or decrease the temperature and change the timer. The monitor will tell you the temperature and humidity level within the cover. Within the box, the PTC heater is located right at the center. It takes air from the bottom. Then, there are a few holes on the center of the cover to leave a moisture escape. So you don't need to open the lid during drying passes. There are also some rubber adapter around the cover to allow you to insert PTFE tubes from different directions if you like to heat in your filament while printing. There are no rubber seal between base and the cover, but cover itself is very solid. The tolerance is very well controlled. It fits nicely and seal properly. The base is covered with stainless steel, the same material as my air fryer. Well, it looks pretty good sitting next to each other, and they all serve to dry stuff. I wonder if I can use this ferment dryer to cook my tater tart. For the longest time, I have stored my PLA filament directly on the open air in my room. Most of my PLA does not have a negative effect due to the moisture, but some of my silk and matte PLA are not doing well with the moisture. I have experienced filament snap in my printer. Since then, I have kept all my filament in a freezer bag with descent. It does help, but sometimes not entirely remove the moisture from my filament. So we are going to run some simple tests and see how much the filament dryer could help. I'm going to use a humidifier to increase the moisture within this container and let my filament sit in for 12 hours. After that, we are going to run a test print before drying and run another test print after drying to compare what's difference. I don't like to throw the filament into the water. This humidifier method might be better to simulate real life moisture environment condition. We are going to put this map PLA, these two rows of PETG, also another row of nylon carbon fiber. I have been having issue with printing this in the past. This nylon carbon fiber contains 20% of the carbon fiber blend, so which is pretty good. But it is so hard to print. Let's weigh the filament first. All those weights are included filament spooled. We have this blue PLA filament weighs 626 gram, black PETG weighs 362 gram, orange PETG weighs 996 gram, and nylon carbon fiber weighs 669 gram. Let's set a timer and get started. I record the humidity level change within the container for a few hours before I want to sleep. But the second day, I slept over, so the time is a little bit over 12 hours. You can see there's a good amount of moisture on the filament. Let me remove all the water as much as possible before we weigh it again. We have PLA filaments now weighed at 628 grams. Black PETG weighs 363 grams. Orange PETG weighs 999 grams. They all have around 2 to 3 grams of weight increase. There could be some remaining water leaves somewhere on the spool that I don't clean completely.
but let's move on the next step. Let's check out PLA first. All four before and after prints are all done with the stock Solver SV06. Before and after printing was printed with the same G code. I have added my video to put the printing result before and after drying together, so you will see the comparison more directly. After printing, this blue PLA now I weight 607 gram. Before drying, after 50 Celsius drying for 5 hours, it weighs 606 gram. Let's check out our printing comparison. You can see, on the left, there's a good amount of stringing from the Banshee. The printing quality is very similar to be honest. The one after drying looks like have a reduced a lot of a stringing issue, but still a bit remaining, but acceptable. Let's take a look at the Kalic Dragon. It looks identical to me on the bottom part of this print. However, when you look above, it is doing very poor on the overhand area. Both before and after are not doing good. Maybe I didn't dry the filament enough. Let's continue to print a PTG filament. Orange PTG was done on the Sova as video 6 and black PTG was printed with a bamboo at A1. I was going to print the exactly same model for both printers but some parts coming off during printing on the A1, so I changed to another model on the A1. The orange PETG film after printing is 973 grams, and black PETG is 347 grams. After drying with the 65 cells for 6 hours, orange film now weighs 973 grams. It is actually remain the same, and the black one weighs 344 grams. Let's compare the elephant print first from the Sova SV06. I can't really tell the difference between those two prints. Besides, the wet film and printing has a bit of first layer issues. Other than that, it looks identical to me. On the other hand, the block PTG film from A1, I specifically picked this model that has a lot amount of retraction during printing, but it surprised me that both prints turned out without major stringing issues. But you can see, after drying one looks a lot better. You can see the detail finish on dry one looks better. The surface looks cleaner, and there is a very little debris and bubbles appears on the print. Next, before we move to nylon carbon fiber filament, I have one PLA carbon fiber come with my printer. I would like to see how well it does right off the sealed bag. It actually turned out pretty good. The surface finishes really well. Beside this random line here, it's not looking good. Let's continue with nylon carbon fiber filament. I want to mention that this nylon carbon fiber filament is significantly harder to print compared to the PLA carbon fiber blend. It is far more sensitive to the moisture and smell bad during the printing. It also does not printing well right out of seal bag when I first testing it. The print is finished, but it does not look good at all. There are tons of debris issued and stringing. The surface finish also looks very rough. PLA carbon fiber blend before drying its weight 454 grams.
455 grams of the drying. Well, it doesn't make sense, but it is what it is. Since the last print turned out really good, I don't think it's necessary to run another test print. Nylon carbon fiber weighs 651 grams. After drying at 70 Celsius for 24 hours, now it weighed 645 grams. There is around 6 grams of the weight reduced. Now let's keep the film in the dryer box and keep the heat on while we are running another test print. This time, the print turned out significantly better. There's still a bit of the stringing issue, but it turned out really good overall. Unfortunately, I don't have any device to test out the string of the print. So let's skip this part for today's video. We are going to do a video project focusing on the string on a later day. I think after all the tests, we can come up with a conclusion. The humidity does have a huge impact to the sound of the filament. Throughout our test, we are assuming that our filament will get wet and our room humidity level is high. But some people might live in the dry area and some people might only print in PLA occasionally. A filament dryer might be something nice to have, but definitely not necessary. If you do have issue with a wet filament, a filament dryer will help you a lot. But after all, I think this fix dry NT1, it is going to be handy for my upcoming future project. I think it looks clean overall. It heats up relatively quick. It is energy efficient. It is simple to use with the different time setting available. It will take most of your application need for hobby level without breaking your bank. It could be a simple film storage device if you are not going to printing a lot. Simply turn it on before your printing and directly feed your film into the printer. It could dry or heat your film simultaneously. There are bearing rod under your spool to ensure smooth rotation. But I have also found two things kind of bugging me. The first thing is, it is not that loud during operation, and my ear could easily to filter out those fan noise in the background. But it makes a ticking noise when the temperature reaches the setting temperature. And then, it cools down a bit, heats up again, reaches the temperature again, and makes that noise again. It is not very loud, but it is that kind of noise will always get your attention. The second thing that caught my attention is that the temperature is not very evenly distributed within the cover. When I set the temperature at 70 Celsius, the center part could reach very really close to that temperature. I could also feel the air from the base that is pushing the hot air around the filament spool area. But closer to the edge area, the temperature is a, a bit lower than the center. It is kind of normal from a thermodynamic perspective, since the heat from the heating element transfer through the convention and the closer distance always get a bit hotter. Since I don't have a thermal image device to get accurate measuring how the heat distributes internally within the cover and how the heat is doing around the filament. I can only tell you there is a temperature difference and how much a deviation it is and how much it will affect the performance drying process. I couldn't give you an accurate answer. But it does what it's supposed to do during my test. I think that's all that matters. I also have encountered another issue. When I try to increase the temperature after the temperature was reached a period setting temperature, the display temperature suddenly jumped into the new setting temperature, which it doesn't make sense at all. I will contact FixDry and report this issue. If I get more information from them, I'll update on the description below for you guys. Back to our question again. Do you really need a film and dryer? I'll leave it for you. Thank you guys for watching, I will see you soon.